Hi, Keith here from Academia Base. Today I'm having some envelope filter fun. <laughs> This isn't a product review, although I am using the MXR envelope filter pedal, and I'm not going to be looking at what I consider to be the best settings either, because that's personal to each and every one of us. And besides that, there are tons of videos out there and that kind of thing. What I am going to do though is look at a few different ways that you can use effects pedals to really enhance your bass lines. First off, I will say that I'm not exactly a pedal freak, but over the years I've bought lots of different pedals, tried them and then sold them thinking that they just weren't for me. But if I'm being 100% honest, I haven't really given that many much of a chance or persevered with learning how to use them properly. So if you're anything like me, impatient, or you've got pedals that you just can't get the best out of, or you're dead keen to get into pedals, hopefully this will be of some help to you. <laughs> I really like the sound of the effect there, it definitely works and it certainly adds some juice to the bass line. But I guess the key thing here is, is it practical and does it have a musical use? Effects can sound over the top and in your face, but that's partly why we like them so much. But so often we can reach for a pedal that we like the sound of, stick it on the bass and have a real party, but without any real conscious thought about just how suitable it is for the music that we're playing, or whether we're overusing it. And for me, the best way to use an effect effectively is to do it subtly. So I'm going to look at five ways that we can use this envelope filter today and get the very best out of it. We can use it to accent parts of a line, we can use it to give things a little bit of a lift and again that can be a part of a line or it can be an entire section of a song that we just want to enhance a little bit. We can also use it to make lines disappear so using an effect can make the sound of your bass lose some of its impact or reduce its attack. So sonically, it can actually disappear or melt into the mix and become a little bit less prominent. So I guess in some ways, it's like an added layer of tone control. And we can also use it to make things a little bit vague and undefined. So we can use it to mask and color the sound of what we're playing too. Now, there is a PDF for this lesson. I'll post the link to that below. It's got all of the lines that I'm going to be playing today. And I'll also include the settings that I'm using on the pedal. I'm gonna start now by playing a really simple bass line. I'm playing over an A minor chord. And as I'm playing, I'm simply gonna punch the pedal in and out so that you can hear the impact that the effect has on the bass line. <laughs> Over this A minor chord I'm playing a really simple bass line. So I'm playing A the root, E the fifth, G the flat and seventh and from this G I'm hammering back onto A the root and I answer that with the second line. And all I'm doing as I play through this is I'm popping the pedal in and out just to bring out different parts of the line and the first thing that I'm bringing out is this. I'm bringing out the top part of this main motif. And then it's on to the answering phrase. I pop it in on this G. Then I played an answering line. 
Don't forget everything that I'm playing is in the PDF, so make sure you grab a copy of that. Then I left the pedal on for the entire answering phrase. I really like that muted line. Then I jumped up to play this bluesy line. So I'm playing A the root to C the flat and third, it's a great sound. And the pedal really helps that sing out. And then it was up to the top part of the neck. And then my favourite part of the line. Now what I'm doing there is playing a consistent flurry of notes. And because I'm playing consistently, the filter doesn't have time to open and close, so the attack of each note is softened and they're kind of melting into each other, which I really like. At the end, I just left the pedal on to play the answering phrase. So what I'm going to do now is have another playthrough, but I'm going to add a second chord. So over the A minor chord, I'm not going to use any effect at all. But when I hit the second chord, which is a D minor, by the way, I'm going to pop the pedal in. Hopefully, you'll hear that it gives that section of the line a real lift. Of course pedals act completely differently depending on the settings and of course how you play. This time I'm going to be leaving the pedal on but I'm going to use the attack in my playing to bring the effect out. Now whilst I'm not using a plectrum this time I'm going to be playing as if I were so the pedal's acting like a tone control whilst I'm playing this chugging rhythm but the filter will really kick in as I play different notes. <laughs> For this last example, I'm going back to the opening bass line that I played because there's a part in it that's a really good example of how to use an effect to mask a line and make it sound a little bit indistinct. The envelope filter really has affected the attack of every note, so the kind of melting or morphing into one, you can't hear the definite attack of each note as you normally would, and the overall effect of the line is that it sounds a little bit lazy and almost out of time, but I really like it. So using effects can be great, but they can really mess things up if you don't use them carefully. But of course, that's a matter of taste. An envelope filter in particular is a really flexible effect that you can do a ton of things with. And I've only used one setting today, so there really is an awful lot more that you can do. I really hope you've enjoyed the lesson today. If you have, feel free to give things the thumbs up, support the channel by subscribing, or hit the bell notification. That way you won't miss out on what I release every week. Thanks for joining me. Look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, happy practicing. <laughs>